Hello, welcome back to the third installment of this exciting series, Intermolecular Forces, Part 3. We're going to be looking at how intermolecular forces affect vapors, vapor pressures, gases. What happens with vapor pressure? So evaporation occurs when molecules escape from the liquid. So they escape from the surface of a liquid into the air above, into the gas phase. How easily this occurs depends on the intermolecular forces. So we can measure that. You put it in an evacuated chamber, and as the liquid evaporates, it exerts pressure. And you can see there in the tube that it moves the mercury uh, down a bit, and this is how you measure vapor pressure. Vapor pressure is determined by intermolecular forces. If those forces are high, then the vapor pressure is low because the molecules cannot escape. In a closed container, the vapor pressure eventually reaches equilibrium. So you can kind of measure it. So the number of molecules that are leaving the liquid becoming gases equals the number that are falling back into the liquid and becoming liquid again. That is equilibrium. Substances with large molar masses have a lot of intermolecular forces. Do you know from what? Well, it's due to the London dispersal forces. Their molecules, their electrons move around, they're tra more attracted to each other. Therefore, they will show or have higher or lower vapor pressure. Which one? They have lower vapor pressure. They cannot escape the liquid uh, as easily. So substances with higher vapor pressure evaporate more quickly than those with lower vapor pressure. This means they are volatile. The term volatile means that they evaporate quickly. That's basically what it means. This is a kinetic energy distribution graph, meaning that obviously if you add more energy to it, the molecules can move more, they are faster moving, and some of them get enough energy to escape. So the higher the temp, the greater the number of molecules with enough energy to escape the liquid and become a gas. And you can see here the shaded areas on the graph, and those are the areas where molecules have enough energy to escape the intermolecular forces of the liquid and enter the gas phase. There it is. This diagram is showing a graph between vapor pressure, tor, and temperature. It's got a couple of different substances showing on it. And at 760 tor, or 1 ATM, is the normal boiling point for these substances.
However, we can manipulate that. If we change the external pressure, we might get some different results. If the external pressure on the liquid is less than 760 torr, the liquid will boil at a lower temperature because there's less pressure on it. You can look at water over there. Note how high the boiling point is for water. It's high compared to the other liquids. Do you know why? And I'm not telling you. Take a look. Tell me why water boils at such a high temperature. So let's do an example at what external pressure will ethanol have a boiling point of 60 degrees Celsius. You can pause. And the answer is coming up at what external pressure will ethanol have a boiling point at, of 60. And the answer is about 340 torr. We're going to look at phase diagrams. Very, very important diagram. Actually, all the diagrams in this section are important. So by manipulating pressure and temperature, you can get some remarkable results. It is possible to get a container with all three states in it at once, liquid, solid, and gas. This is represented by what's called a phase diagram. You can see here pressure against temperature over there on the side and the bottom. And at the spot where you can get all three, it's called the triple point. You can see this is one for water, and that is where you can get all three in the container at one time. The line separating the phases shows equilibrium between the two, such as between ice and water vapor, you, you're at equilibrium. You'll have both on the line in that container. And you can see that the lines, there's a line between ice and water and vapor and water as well. The critical point occurs when it's not possible to tell the difference between the liquid and the gas. They're at some funky, weird thing. They're kind of a blend at the critical point. You might as well know this graph is on every single SAT, ACT, and on every AP exam. So let's do an example and look at it more closely so you really have an understanding of it. So we're going to look at this. I'm going to draw some lines on the graph, and you will uh, solve a problem with it. So there's going to be a horizontal and a vertical line, and different points will be shown. Like I said, this graph is absolutely on every test you've ever taken or ever will take. So make sure that you understand what's happening with it. I'm going to make some points here so you can draw some conclusions. The little red dots. All right, here is the question. Describe the changes in phases when water is I, kept at zero, while the pressure is increased from A through E, and II, kept at 1 ATM, so its pressure is uh, kept steady, while the temp is increased from F to I. Pause. Here come the answers. At A, H2O is totally water vapor. At B, it's on the equilibrium line, so you have a mixture of both water and ice, okay, solid and gas. At C, it's completely a solid. At D, it's on the equilibrium line between ice and water. You have both. 
and at E, you can see that it is completely water. For question II, we start at F at 1 ATM. You can see that it is completely solid ice. At D again, it's on that equilibrium line between solid and liquid. At G, you can see that it is completely a liquid. At H, it is on the equilibrium line between a liquid and a gas. And at I, it is completely a gas. I can't stress enough how important this graph is for all standardized tests you will ever take. And that is the end for this chapter. There's still some you have to read in the chapter, though.